You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramat Beit Shemesh Israel 5780, 2020. Once again, I'd like to encourage you to go to arigoldwag.com slash new album and contribute to my video campaign. We're looking to raise $21,000. Baruch Hashem, we're almost at $7,000. About six, almost at about six and a half thousand. Almost at the first video. Three videos we'd like to do. And in order to spread the messages of positivity and closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, closeness to God, we need your help. So join in now, arigoldwag.com slash new album. Thank you so much. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Shoftim. And in our Parsha, the Torah tells us what to do when it's time to go out to war. There are times of peace, there are times of war. And our, the Medrash speaks at length, and I'd like to share with you a few ideas. What is the concept of peace? And it's very interesting, we talk about the concept of peace within the context of war. Because the Pasuk tells us that when we get too close, when we come to a city, when we get close to a city, so there's an obligation to reach out to the people of that city and to say, instead of war, we'd like to make peace. That's give them. We give them the first option of peace. That's the first thing that we do. We're not looking to have war. We're looking for there to be peace, really. Sometimes in order for there to be peace, we need to fight. And indeed, there were certain circumstances where the Jewish people reached out for peace and the people responded and said, we want peace. There were the Gevoinim who came to the Jewish people and they wanted peace and others as well. So the Medjish tells us there's, there's a number of different ideas, concepts that we see that the Torah specifically wants us to pursue peace. What is the idea of pursuing peace? What does it mean to find peace? There's a number of things that our Chazal instituted that our sages say were important, say that are important, in order that there be peace between people. Because, as we all know, naturally the human being is very, I don't want to say combative, but there's tacharut, there's, com- there's competition, there's competitiveness amongst human beings. So Chazal instituted a number of different things in order that there should be peace, that there shouldn't be this competitiveness, this competition. This is what our sages said in regards to pursuing peace. Right? In the when it comes to the services in the base in the base Haknasas in a shul, so there are places where people get kibudim, they get honors. One of the places is when it comes to receiving an aliyah la Torah, an aliyah. So, it's easy for there to be a tacharut, for there to be competition. Hey, how come that person got an aliyah? How come I didn't get an aliyah? So our sages instituted that there's a hierarchy. That the kohanim, since they have the highest level of kedusha, the priests of the Jewish people, uh, they are the ones who get the first aliyah. The Levites, they have a secondary kedusha, a secondary holiness. They get the second aliyah. And then the Israelim, after that, they receive it. That's very interesting because... When we think about it, well, how does that create peace? I mean, maybe the Kohanim will fight with each other, maybe the Levites will fight with each other, maybe the Israelites will fight with each other. What's the idea? What's the concept? But the idea here is very clear that what is the reason why we have competition? Why does one person get upset at another person? Why am I jealous that that person got an aliyah? I didn't get an aliyah. What's the idea? That is because we don't understand our place. We don't know who we are and, and we're not honest about it. Chazal made a beautiful takana, a beautiful um, gzera, uh, a uh, rectification, let us call it, right? And in order that there be a clarity, who is who? Who is the most chashiv in Klai The Kohanim are, the priests. Who is next? The Levites, the Israelites. And in so doing, Chazal are saying, we need to know who we are. Each person has his place. Each person is important. Of course, the Kohanim, why are they chashu? Why are they important? Because they're the ones who serve God in the, in the temple, the Beis Hamikdash, and they're naturally the leaders of the Jewish people. And the Levites also have a certain aspect as well of leadership. They're the ones who play the music in the temple. They're the ones who guide the Jewish people to, to show them to, how to do what's right. And so, in so doing, Chazal are teaching us: you want to know how you have peace? Know who you really are. Just be honest about who you are. So that's the first concept of peace: is having honesty. And sometimes. As is clear from this medrash, 
we need to have it from outside. We need someone who is not in sana, subjective, as far as who's important here and who's less important. We need someone who's objective. Klal Yisrael has our sages who guide us and show us exactly what the proper perspective is, how the hierarchy is set up, and it has to do with Avodah Hashem. Who is the most chashiv in Klal Yisrael? Those who serve God more. Those who act on our behalf. The Kohanim are our shluchim. They are our agents when it comes to bringing the korbanos, the sacrifices, etc. See how great is the power of peace. Very interesting. The Medjah brings another example of where we have Dark Yisham, where we have peace, where we have something in the celestial uh, being, so to speak, when it comes to the sun and the moon. So we know that the moon, sometimes it waxes and wanes. It gets larger, it gets smaller. What was the reason for that? It's a whole Medjah as to, there, it was, there was a conversation between HaKadosh Baruch between God and the moon during the six days of creation. The moon said, how can, how can I rule over the skies if the sun is also ruling over the skies? Two kings can't have one crown. And God says to him, her, says to the moon, you're right, we're going to make the sun big, we're going to make you small. Now, what happened? Because of that, as a result of that, um, the moon waxes and wanes. It gets larger and it gets smaller. But if you look at the moon, and we, we understand this, you know, because the sun is obviously shining its light upon the moon. But, also, look at the fact that the side of the of the pegima salavana, the side where the moon is not shining, doesn't have a light. That side is never seen by the sun, so to speak. It, this indicates something, right? This is we have a natural understanding of it as well, scientific understanding we could say. But but there's a deeper lesson to why it's set up that way. Because Allah teaching us that it's set up that way because the 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 sun shouldn't see the pegima, the lack of the moon. And that means when we have, when we, let's say, look at our kids, right? So we are the, the in, a, in a relationship, there's the male and the female. The male is the giver, the woman is the receiver, right? That's not just, that's not just the literal thing between a man and his wife or a man and a woman, but it's also true in regards to any relationship, a, a mother and her children. So the mother is the male aspect because she's the giver and the children are the female aspect, they're the receivers. And our Chazal is telling us that when it comes to a relationship between the male, which is the sun, the male aspect, and the female, which is the, the, the moon, which is the female aspect. So there's an obligation. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to see the good. Right? Hashem was matbia, for example, in the human being, that men are attracted to women. They look at their beauty. Naturally, when a person is going out with, with uh, let's say, his prospective wife, so what does he see? He sees the nice things. We look at the nice things. Chazal is teaching us that we need to look at the positive side of our children. We look at the positive side of our spouses. Whenever there's a relationship, the way to peace is by focusing on the positive. So that's the second aspect. The first one was everyone knowing their place, having a clear understanding of who we are. Right? I shouldn't think that I'm better than I am. I should know exactly who I am, exactly where I belong in the hierarchy. That's one way that we get to peace. The second way is to look at the good of others, not to see the negativity of others. Second point. Now, the the We find that Hashem makes peace amongst the, the heavenly bodies. Okay? Levi says an interesting thing. When it comes to the mazalis, when it comes to the to the constellations in the heavens, so everything moves. That's that's how the constellations are set up. As they move, says Rabbi Levi, they are not facing forward. If you would, if we could imagine that the constellations have a face, if you look at the way, if we would look at it in in spiritual terms, so they look, they're looking behind them. They're not looking forward. They're not seeing who's in front of them. They don't look. Uh, there is a certain sense, perhaps, of competition there. But they don't look at who's in front of them. They look at who's behind them. What does that mean? Uh, when, person, when a person is going down a, a ladder, so he doesn't look up. He looks down. He has to see where he's going. Hashem set it up in an interesting way. And again, this is, a, this is a lesson for us. This is a spiritual reality we need to understand. Hashem set it up that the constellations don't look up. They look down. This way, they all feel like they're, they're on top. They're the first one. right? So it's an important thing in life. This is teaching us 
about peace, about how to have peace with ourselves, how to have peace with the world around us. Don't look at those who are ahead of you. Don't look at it like, oh my gosh, I'm losing the race. Always look at those, and it's not, it's important to understand, it doesn't mean to, to knock down others, chas to, v'shalom, to, to think of others in a negative way, but a person should always feel like they're winning the race. Look where I am. Again, this comes in line with being honest exactly what one's place is in the world. Who am I? What am I accomplishing? What, what, what are my accomplishments? I don't need to look at other people's accomplishments, someone who's ahead of me. Let's look at where I am. Perhaps look at how I'm succeeding in regards to those who are not as successful as me. But the point is to appreciate where I am and my place and not to look up and not to look past at those who are perhaps more successful than myself. This is the idea that God creates peace in the heavenly spheres. Another place that we see it. So we're talking now, until now we're talking about the celestial bodies. We find this also when it comes to the the angels in heaven, the angels in heaven themselves. So we see that what is the aspect of Michal? Michal is the aspect of snow. Whatever this means, what is the concept here? Let's understand it as it applies to us. Michal is the aspect of snow. Gavriel, the angel Gavriel, he's the aspect of fire. They stand next to each other and they don't cause damage to each other. Why? Because each one does what they're supposed to do. Each one has their purpose and they balance each other out. The the snow angel, so to speak, Michal, Michael, does not put out the fire angel, Gabriel, Gavriel. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. There's a perfect balance. Amar Bar Kapara Uma Imelyonim Shaim Bam Lake Kinov Lai Sinum Lai Tacharus Hains Rikan Shalom. So we see that Hashem uh, he inculcated, he imbued into reality on the spiritual realms, whether it's the Malach and the angels or whether it's the celestial bodies, because Shbroch who imbued into them a balance, a peace. Each one has its place. Each one feels like it's important. Each one does what it's supposed to do. Nobody looks at the negativity of the other. So if that's the case in the celestial celestial spheres where there is no tacharut, there is no competition there. HaKadosh Baruch Hu also imbued into the reality that we exist within. That there should be competition, that there is anger, that there is uh, hatred and, and, and jealousy. So we certainly need this aspect of Shalom. We need to imbibe the lesson of peace. Which, which we see that Kodesh Baruch Hu sets things up that way in regards to the upper worlds. The sages say, how awesome, how great is the concept of peace. This comes back to our Pasuk and our Parsha, where we come out to war. And Kodesh Baruch Hu says, when you come out to war, call out for peace. Even when a person comes out to war, you're, you're coming out to war. You've got your swords ready. You've got your, your daggers ready. What do we do? The first thing that you need to do when you come out to war is to say, we want peace. We're not interested in fighting. We're not interested in killing anybody what we really want is peace we really want that we should have we should come to an agreement right there's an obligation to call out for peace so we see that there is this aspect of peace that's the first part of the medrash and it's an amazing part of the medrash and it speaks about it speaks to each and every one of us we got to know who we are we got to be honest we got to not look at the negative of others but only at the positive and we need to look not at those who are beating us, not at those who are ahead of us, so to speak, in the, in the game of life, but rather look at our personal accomplishments, perhaps in uh, contrast to those who are below us. That's the, the first part of the Medrash. Now, the second part of the Medrash is a bit longer, and I don't know if we'll get to all of it, but it's an important idea, which, which also speaks to the concept of peace and understanding what does it mean to live in a peaceful world? What does it mean to live with peace? This verse is a verse the measure quotes in Eov in Job chapter 22 verse 28. And, and 
the, the Rabbanan say that the verse is speaking about a circumstance where there should have been a lack of peace. There should have been destruction. Right? Peace means that you have two parties. Perhaps they're at odds. Perhaps they're in a fight. And they come together. Instead of milchama, instead of warring with each other, they have peace. They come to an agreement. They say, we're not going to get upset at each other. Even though we have cause to, even though we have re every reason to be upset, instead, we're going to have peace. So there is a situation, a, a situation. Hashem got angry at Klal Yisrael. Why? Because they had done the Egel. They had bowed down to the golden calf. And there was no greater uh, defiance of HaKadosh Baruch Hu than to bow down to an idol. Instead, there, there they are waiting for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to send down Moshe Rabbeinu with the Luchos, with the Talis, with, this, with the Covenant, with the Torah, that he was there for 40 days and 40 nights to receive on their behalf. And instead of waiting that extra day, Klal Yisrael created an Egel, they created a golden calf, which they bowed down to. Hashem was angry. He said, I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to bring a plague upon them. And I'm going to give you. You're going to be the future of Klal Yisrael. So, what happens? I'm skipping a bit here. Very interesting. When Moshe Rabbeinu heard this, he heard Mochama. He heard, the, he, sh he heard that Hashem is angry at Klai the, the Jews are going to be destroyed, Chas Hashem, heaven forbid. That re the relationship between Hashem and Klai is over, Hashem is saying. What does Moshe Rabbeinu do? He says, please God have mercy on them. Don't destroy them. Have mercy on them. He said, I, I, this is the verse, I believe. Uh, I believe, I'm not sure where this verse is, but he said, eye to eye, they saw you, Hashem. Nira to Hashem. Nira to Hashem. You saw them, they, they, were, they saw you. Eye to eye. Now think about it, when, when two people are eye to eye, so they're, they're shava b'shava, as the Mephoshim explained here. They're, they're on equal footing. Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu says to God, you can't, you can't destroy them because look, you have a Midas Adin. You have the, the, the attribute of divine justice saying, look, they broke the relationship with me, they have to be destroyed. But there's, there's on the side of Rachamim, we got to, we've got to balance, okay? We have, we have the scales here, they're, they're in balance. How is, how so? You say I'm going to destroy them, but I'm saying, forgive them. Don't destroy them. Amazing thing. Moshe Rabbeinu says, who's going to win? It's, it's, it's a perfectly balanced scale. You say you need to destroy them, but I say that you need to have compassion on them. Hashem says to Moshe I, I promise, I swear, you win. I'm happy, you won. Unbelievable. Moshe Rabbeinu is able to bring about peace. Now it's very interesting. How is he able to do that? How is he able to have the chutzpah, so to speak, to say such a thing? How did he know that he could say to a Kodesh Baruch Hu anything? And the uh, Marzu explains one of the Perushim here on the Medrash. It's an amazing thing. It's based on the Gemara and Brachas, other places. That Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem, you know, Hashem, when he wants to, and we find other places in the Torah where indeed that's what happens. When Hashem is angry, so the destruction happens. It can happen immediately. Chas v'shalom. When Hashem wants to destroy, Hashem doesn't need to say anything to Moshe Rabbeinu. Oh, I want to destroy Klal Yisrael. He could, he could just do it. We find elsewhere that indeed it, it just starts on its own. When it came to the story with Korach, it started on its own. Aaron had to go out to, to prevent the Magaifa, to stop the plague from happening. Moshe Rabbeinu hears Hashem say to him, I want to destroy. When, when Hashem says, I want to destroy, and He doesn't actually just do it, it's an indication to Moshe Rabbeinu says the Maharzu. It's an indication of Moshe that he, Hashem, is implying that he needs to intercede. That he needs to say something. He needs to speak up. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not really want to destroy. When there's a plague, for instance, you know, think about the, the, the corona pandemic that we're, that we're going through right now. 
You know, it could be so much worse. It could be terrible. I mean, there are places where it was terrible immediately. And indeed, many people died. And people are still dying. And there are places where it didn't, it, it, it took until the second wave for it to happen. But, but why does it, what is the, why does HaKadosh Baruch Hu do that? It's obviously the hand of Hashem. That, that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to create a Magefa, He wants to uh, bring about a plague to cause many people to die, heaven forbid. He can do it. He can do whatever He wants, right? But when there's a pause, when there's a, when there's, when there's a Kodesh Baruch Hu saying, hey, this is what I want to do. This is, watch out. This is what I want to do. So the Medrash is teaching us uh, when a Kodesh Baruch Hu does things in that way, He's giving us an opportunity to do tshuva. He's giving us an opportunity to, to, to beg for mercy, to ask a Kodesh Baruch Hu, please forgive us. We have done something to, to destroy our relationship with a Kodesh Baruch Hu. We, each and every individual needs to think about it, how it's true in their own personal case. But we need to think about it as on a national level as well. What has our society done to this, to to to, um, to separate ourselves from from a kaddish Baruch Hu, from God? What what are we doing that we're not connected in our businesses? Do we believe that Hashem is the one providing us with parnasa, or do we believe that it's us doing it? Uh, do we have bitachon? Do we work on our faith in that kaddish Baruch Hu? Do we depend on Hashem? Are we connected to Him, or are we not? Are we are we creating our own avodah our own calf, our own golden calf? Are we in a state of peace with God or are we in a state of war with God? So if we're in a state of war, so the Midas, Har, Midas Hadin comes out and says, watch out. Watch out. There's going to be a plague. Chas v'shalom, heaven forbid. But it's, if, if there's a pause, or if there, it seems like there's an opportunity for us to, to, to take stock, which is a Moshe Rabbeinu saw, and Moshe Rabbeinu took that opportunity, and indeed he won. Hashem was excited. Nitzchuni bonai. Hashem says, I'm so happy. You, you brought about Racham, you brought about the mercy. You, that's what I want. Hashem, Hashem prays, as it were, that His Midas HaRacham should overcome His Midas Hadin, that His, his attribute of mercy should overcome the attribute of divine, of divine justice. But we have to ask for it. We need to ask for Rachamim. We need, you know, it's, it's the beginning of Elul now. It's the time, the, the, this is, these are the days that Moshe Rabbeinu was on Har Sinai, asking from now all the way until Yom Kippur, that Hashem should have rachamim, have compassion on us. Hashem have compassion on us. Hashem in a moment could send a vaccine. Hashem in a moment could 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 change the strand of, of the COVID-19 virus that it should be it should be have no effect. Just like a hurricane could be a, a terrible destructive force, and then all of a sudden it could turn to a tropical storm and then become an, an abate and become nothing. Because Rahu in a moment can do that. But what does it depend on? Because he starts off with din. Hashem says, This is what it is. I'm upset. You guys have broken your relationship with me. And then we need to step in, just like a Moshe Rabbeinu, and see, oh, because Hashem is giving us space. Hashem is giving us an opportunity. Do we ask for Rachamim? Do we come back into the relationship? Do we say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, mercy on us. We realize we were disconnected from you. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're going to work on our bitachon. We're going to work on our connection to you, believing that you are really the one that does it. You are really the one that provides our parnasa. It's not the government that's going into crazy debt. It's not Netanyahu, it's not Trump, it's not anybody. It's just you. Hashem, you are the one. I want to be connected to you. That's what Kodesh Baruch is waiting for. We have 40 days right now until Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur, last year Yom Kippur, it was Nigzar. Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur, it was Nigzar. What we saw this past year. The coronavirus, Kodesh Baruch decreed on Rosh Hashanah of last year. That it's going to take over our lives and our minds this year. Do we want it to change? Do we want to see something different? Do we want a vaccine? Do we want to see the world back to normal? Back to what, we, what it was like before the coronavirus? Is that what we want? Do we want the plague to end? This is the secret. The secret to the end of the coronavirus is right here in the Medrash. It's the secret to peace. The secret is asking for Rachamim, coming back into a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hashem wants us to win, so to speak. Hashem wants us to win by saying, hey, we want peace. And I want to come back to what we said before. And it's true, not just in our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch, with HaKadosh Baruch with God, but it's true in our relationship with others as well. We need to know who we are. We need to be honest. We need that peace. We need to look at the good of others. And we need to be excited about where we are and our accomplishments, not looking at those who might be ahead of us, but looking just at ourselves and looking at what we have accomplished and not being jealous of others. So it's so important. Recognize the importance of peace. And this is the path out. So I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us 
that we should be zayche to have rachamim, to have rachamim, to have mercy. Hashem should have mercy on us, and we can be zayche with it. Hashem should help us to recognize that we can change it by entering back into a relationship with Him. Hashem should help us to be comfortable with who we are, be honest about who we are, and indeed to see the good of others and to enjoy the accomplishments that we have without looking at others in a jealous way, heaven forbid. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.